I'm Adam Bishop. I'm Britain's strongest man. That's it. That's all you need to know. It feels fantastic to be uh, finally crowned as Britain's strongest man. Uh, came really close last year, just miss, miss, missed out to Hixie. So, you know, it's, it's effectively the end of 10 years working towards this. I've been in the sport of strongman 10 years in some form, whether it was in the 105s, and obviously wanted to, to get to the top in Britain, and, and now it's kind of finally happened. It, it feels fantastic. In all honesty, I, I don't think I really had any doubts. That's why when, when the comp was done, I wasn't actually kind of surprised that I won. And it didn't really kind of sink in what I'd done until I you know, probably got home after a couple of days because myself and my team, we, we, we set a goal and we set different goals for each event and they all happened as, as they should have. So there was, there was no kind of surprises there really. Uh, and I knew that if I did what I needed to do, then, then no one would be able to beat me. It's probably a little closer than I would have liked, but I knew that going into the stones with Tom, with that kind of two and a half point buffer, which is effectively a three point buffer, uh, it put me in a really good position. It meant I could take my foot off the gas a little bit on the stones and, and maybe not chance making mistake by going trying to go too quickly uh, so yeah it was a, it was a, a nice place to be no unfortunately there was no time to, to really celebrate I had that evening where you know I, I didn't really get to sleep until about 7 a.m. just because I was awake but no no real celebrations it was just kind of on to the next job straight back into work on the Monday and then from there you know we're working towards the next comp you don't really have much time to, to rest in this game because everyone's working so hard that if you, you don't if you stop training then someone's gonna outwork you Make sure if you haven't if you haven't been to a Giants live show before, you have to get tickets. You're very you're spoiled in the UK and in Europe. Really, it's not that hard to get over to the UK. Come and watch us live. That way, you don't have to complain at the fact that you have to wait until Christmas to see World's Strongest Man. You can come and watch the show and, and see everyone compete live. I guess I'm known as a, a, a strength athlete who takes his time and kind of thinks around it, you know, the thinking strongman. Um, and that is, that is true to a certain extent. I'm a big one on programming. It's, it's my job. You know, I'm, I'm working with athletes the whole time. I'm a strength coach. And obviously, you know, I'm, I'm my, uh, my biggest client. You know, I'm, I'm coaching myself. I'm training myself and programming myself. So I like to look at every single event and break it down and, and take my time and, and think everything through. And I think that kind of shows in, in both my training and how I compete on the day. In terms of strongman events, I'm probably best known for my deadlifting. Uh, I back myself, especially deadlift for reps, to take on anyone in the world right now. I've, I've always traditionally struggled on, on kind of pressing events, but you know, it's funny enough, my log press is probably one of my weakest presses, but it's the one I love training. It's probably the one I train the hardest, that and Atlas Stones. Um, you know, the reason obviously I train Atlas Stones so hard is because it's in every competition we do. It's pretty much the only guaranteed event. So I put a lot of, a lot of time into to Atlas Stone training. And, and yeah, I definitely kind of enjoy log, log press training the most. Um, obviously, with my, my job being a, an SNC coach, uh, it gives me a, a really good understanding of, of everything that's kind of going on. I understand what I need to do. I understand kind of different uh, periodization models and what I, where I need to be in order to succeed. But you know, the, probably the biggest lesson I learned was that I, I stopped training myself as a rugby player. Obviously a former rugby player myself. And when I started in this game, I was really undercooking myself because I was training as if I was still a rugby player. So understanding the difference between obviously a rugby player and a, a true strength and power athlete and a strongman athlete is, is, is incredibly important. It's something that I did learn quite early on and, and made some changes. I'm the kind of coach who likes to uh, make sure I'm kind of learning stuff under the bar. Uh, I set a practical example for my players. Uh, I feel that the message is stronger if you can physically lift yourself uh, and do everything that you're asking them to do. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of take take a lot of the movements that I do in training and then implement them with some of the, the players. Uh, you know, the, the basic lifts and, and, and for me, my understanding of obviously squats, deadlifts, presses, is, is, is hugely important towards my, my coaching ability. I think my understanding of, of, of kind of training from working as an SNC coach definitely gives me an edge. Uh, unfortunately, having a full-time job, uh, we are quite a, a, a time demanding job is probably a bit of a disadvantage uh, to me over some of the other guys who, who are now moving towards a full-time status. But you know, I love my job as it is at the moment and I'll keep doing it as long as I enjoy it. Trying to hold down a full-time job and then and, and, uh, be a full-time strongman and also a full-time eater as, uh, is, is difficult at times. It is the, the you know the, the time constraints. 
you know, whereas I see some of the guys just doing recovery work, eating, and then training in the evening. Obviously, I've got a full, a full day of work before I go back and train in the evening. Uh, and trying to fit my meals in is probably the biggest problem. Uh, but we managed to make it work at the moment and, and I'm very lucky that Harlequins are very, very understanding of me and they support me in this, in this kind of uh, my journey in Strongman and with, in, with my dreams and they uh, give me the time off to compete uh, and they you know, give me time in between sessions to make sure I'm getting my food in so it's, uh, it's fantastic to have such a supportive employer. I think investing in my own home gym at, at, at my new house was probably the reason I managed to win Britain's Strongest Man this year. You know, to be able to have no distractions, uh, there's, there's no phone signal in there, there's no internet in there, uh, so I can just go down there and train. Uh, no mirrors, no TV screens, uh, no one else trains in there, uh, there's no heating. But the equipment I've been able to put in there is kind of completely bespoke to me, uh, which is massively important. I've got a job, I've got things to do. Um, it means that I can come home from work and, and train in the evening. I've got a consistent time I can train get home, eat, maybe have a sleep, and then, and then get in the, the home gym and train. So, you know, talking about nerves in the sport is, is quite interesting, actually, because uh, at Europe's Strongest Man, I had a situation where I maybe you call it anxiety, call it nerves, whatever, but I didn't want to be there. Uh, I was in the lineup, uh, and I was just thinking, no, I, I want to go, I don't want to, don't want to do this. And I think it pretty, pretty much showed in my performance that year. But, you know, ever since then, after that, so in the build up to Worlds, I went out and worked with a sports psychologist and you know, between us, we, we, we kind of built this uh, picture and we, we realized obviously the, the negative kind of negative thoughts from what we called cautious corner, you know, just do enough, maybe that, you know, just do enough each time. Don't maybe give it your best, don't overexert yourself. Uh, we managed to get a control of those. Uh, and that's, I think, stood me in really good stead, both for making the final at Worlds this year, whereas previous years I probably would have freaked out a bit. And then obviously moving forward to, to Britain's Strongest Man, like staying controlled, focused on each individual event as a whole, uh, as opposed to looking at the, the competition as one big goal, uh, breaking it up. And that's what we did, and it made a huge difference for me. Everyone has days where they kind of don't feel like they, they want to train. And, I, you know, I, I take a different approach to some. You know, I'll, I'll sometimes get into the gym and, and uh, get going and try and remind myself of why I'm doing this. But also, you know, if, if my motivation isn't there and my body's telling me, you know, if the, the barbell's feeling heavy if, and the body's telling me to have a rest, I, I listen to it, you know, I'll take a rest. I might just take that evening off or and train to get tried the next day or, or have a full week off and, and get reset. You know, I think people try sometimes try and push through training a little bit too much if they are physically fatigued and it's not just a little bit of mental overexertion. So yeah, I, I tend to, you know, either one, reevaluate and try and remember what I'm doing this for, which keeps me very motivated, or if I am feeling extremely run down, then I'll just take that evening off and, and chill. Yeah, so I guess my biggest setback uh, was, or my biggest injury was rupturing my bicep tendon in 2017. Uh, once again, Europe's strongest man on the axle. Uh, but I turned it to my biggest positive, I think. It was my first kind of big injury in Strongman. Um, and, you know, I felt sorry for myself for that evening. Uh, but then, you know, after, after I had the surgery to have my bicep reattached, I looked at it as a massive positive. It was time for me to improve. It was time to uh, improve on everything. And I, I saw once I did get myself back fit, that all, everything I'd worked on while I was injured, uh, not competing, has made a massive difference to where I am now, improving my, my lockout strength for deadlift, improving my form on my deadlift, uh, improving my squat numbers, you know, focusing all these different things, I, I turned what was a, a bad injury into a huge positive and, and brought myself back stronger. Strength training is all about consistency. You have to stay uh, both consistent with your, um, your training, the intensity, your nutrition, uh, and if you keep doing that for a period of time, you will progress. Uh, I think too many people kind of look for the shortcut. Uh, I think things are going to happen very, very quickly by jumping between programs or what have you. Uh, but you, you have to take your time. Uh, and I guess the key is to make sure you're never in a situation where life really kind of knocks you down. You know, when you're traveling, take food with you, make sure you know where you're going. Is there a place you can train? These are all things that I tend to do. If I'm away with work, I'll make sure I find somewhere I can train or I change my training days around so I'm prepared that I don't have to train while I'm away. Uh, the same thing with food. I make sure I've always got food with me, uh, that I'm not kind of missing meals, which is a huge, huge thing for me. I don't have a lot of the things that I know a lot of other guys have got. You know, I, I don't have kids. I'm not planning on having kids. So for me, I can be completely selfish towards, towards strongman. 
Uh, my girlfriend does uh, Ironman races, so she's exactly the same. We can be selfish together and just focus on that. And we pretty much revolve our whole lives around both strongman or, or marathons and uh, Ironmans. I guess you know, the, the sport has, has grown massively and I think it's probably a, a two-pronged attack of why it's improved so much. I think obviously Giants Live has, has been a huge thing, especially in the UK in terms of pushing the sport forward. Uh, people don't have to wait until Christmas anymore to see us, they can come to a live show. There's more and more live shows. And also we, I, I don't think we can underestimate the impact that Eddie had on the sport. Winning World's Strongest Man after uh, you know, several years of, of no one winning it from Britain. Uh, he really kicked the sport on and was such a big personality that he's helped us all moving forward. We've got more people interested in the sport. People like to see the bigger, stronger athletes, you know, kind of things they'd see more at a circus. And that's what, that's what Strongman is. It's not a sport, it's, it's kind of sports entertainment. And guys, they, you know, people want to see us do ridiculous things, you know, flip cars or carry cars or, or press, you know, huge logs above our head, lift stones. It, it, it's very, uh, it's an extreme sport. And I think that's what probably turns people on about it. I think I started training in 2010. I actually was just training in a dusty yard in the middle of Leicestershire um, and I actually you know, said in, by 2015 I'd compete at World's Strongest Man and I did. You know what, I didn't actually put a thing of the date I wanted to win Britain's Strongest Man uh, but you know, I, I guess I turned what was just a hobby into uh, and a passion into uh, you know, a sport and, and uh, making sure I kind of got to Worlds and then winning Britain's Strongest Man. So, I, I guess my story is like uh, basically anything's possible and people put, if they're willing to put the time in then they, they can get to the top because you know, I was just a, a 105 strength athlete. Uh, I don't think of myself as a genetic freak. I, I'm, not, I'm not six foot eight. Um, yeah, you know, and while I'm like six foot three and 140, 47 kilos, that's not that big compared to the rest of the strongman community. You definitely got to have the, the genetics to compete in strongman in terms of, I'm not saying I was like not strong as a rugby player and an athlete, I was, I was a strong guy. You know, the first time I deadlifted, I deadlifted 200 for three. Um, at the age of 17, I was hand cleaning 110, benching 140, squatting 200 for five. So yeah, I definitely had a, had a, a, a connection with strength training. It was more of a case that, you know, if you're willing to put the time in, as long as you, you, you know, you have got that kind of low level of base genetics, then you, you, can, you can get to the top. When I stopped playing rugby, I'd already been competing in strongman for a little bit. So I, I started in the 105 class uh, when I was up at Loughborough University studying. Uh, formerly when I was a player, I, I played at Saracens as part of their academy system growing up. Um, and, you know, it was, I just didn't have a, a position really on the field. I was a good athlete, but maybe, you know, I played both sometimes on the, in the back row and then moved out to the wing. Uh, so I was playing on the wing as a 100, 102 kilo athlete. And, you know, it was, it was more of a case that, yeah, I was, I was quick, I was fast, you know, I was strong, uh, but probably didn't have a, a set position uh, like a lot of the guys who were um, playing in the Premiership now. Um, you know, I used to get on really well with sevens. Uh, and it was a case that, you know, I, I just started training strongman because I, I liked watching it when I was a kid and the opportunity arose and it kind of just progressed from there. I knew that once, once I wanted to get the job here at Harlequins, I wouldn't be able to, to play rugby and have the job because obviously you, you're involved in match days. So, you know, progressing my strongman uh, was perfect because it doesn't require as much training in reality in terms of time per week that rugby does. Um, and it means I can, you know, go and compete for the odd, odd weekend here and there. And that's when it kind of like got the ball rolling. And obviously, you know, nine years later, I'm, I'm still at Harlequins and, and I've uh, progressed to where I am. My programme now and, and the way the, the players train is, is completely different. Um, with my players, I'll do three effectively total body sessions through the week. A one heavy lifting day and then two lighter days. We, we do some kind of upper body um, bodybuilding work as well, just to maintain their mass, but it, it's similar lifts. You know, I still do a lot of bodybuilding work in my program, uh, but because my lifts are heavier, I need to be able to separate them a little bit more. And obviously I'm doing more gym sessions because lifting is my sport, whereas rugby is their sport and they've got rugby to do. So yeah, for me, I've got more, more weight sessions and I tend to focus a little bit more or I need more time to recover between the heavy lifts because I'm, I'm lifting heavier than, than some of my athletes do. And obviously they're trying to recover from being beat up every weekend uh, on the pitch. So it's, it's just a different challenge. 
Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, the well-known cases like Terry Hollands was a former rugby player. Uh, Janasha played rugby in his youth. And I guess that's how most people, it's the same for me, is, that's how you get into the iron game is, is you, you start training in the gym to, uh, to get stronger for rugby. Uh, you know, as a kid, you're kind of pushed towards rugby because either you're big or you're, you're, you're fast or strong. Um, it's more of a strength of power sport over, let's say, football. Um, so, you know, these kind of athletes get pushed into to rugby and then they, they start training when they get to a certain age to put on some, some strength and size for the rugby season and then probably just t turns out they enjoy the lifting side of things more. So it's probably why you get so many kind of rugby players transitioning into strongman. You know, there, there are some, some strong boys in the squad, whether they could mix it in uh, World Strongest Man is probably a different question. The, the big thing you kind of, you kind of lack in is that, is that kind of deadlifting ability and we don't really have that huge amount. We've got a lot of squatters uh, and some strong presses, but the, you have to remember these rugby players, they have to be able to run like so far in a week as well and, and be able to do all these different things and have the technical ability. So they don't really realize their true potential when it comes to strength training. If you are going to transition into, into strength training, just make sure you, you take your time. I mean, that's the most important thing. Uh, that's with anyone getting into, into strongman or, or strength training is be happy with small amounts of progress. Don't, don't rush to, to become you know, Britain's strongest man overnight. I mean, as I said before, it's taken me 10 years to get there. Um, 10 years of consistent work. I mean, I don't think I've had over a week off a year of training. Uh, so what, 10 weeks off in 10 years? Um, is is you know pretty extreme, but just just take your time and, and make sure you enjoy it. What, what you don't want to be doing is getting into a sport and putting so much pressure on yourself that suddenly you don't don't enjoy it and it becomes like a job. And that's that's not why we do these things. It's not that well paid, so don't think you're going to be a world beater and get fame and fortune because you just won't. So obviously, my, my big goals for this season, the, the 2020 season, was to win Britain's Strongest Man, so we can tick that off. Another goal is to, to pull a thousand pounds, which I'll be looking to do at the end of the year. Uh, I've got another world record planned in the pipeline that I can't talk about yet. And also, uh, obviously, I want to get top five at World Strongest Man. That's that's the the three slash four key goals that that I set myself at the back end of last year, and, and obviously I've, I've got one of them ticked off. We've got another couple to get sorted. I guess kind of my, my biggest kind of uh, rivalry, but it's also my biggest friendship is working with the Stoltmans. We've been through the ranks, especially myself and Luke, uh, we've gone through the ranks of Strongman at the same time. And obviously then Tom joined us being a the big freak he is. But yeah, we get on really well, but obviously at Britain's this year, it was it's us three kind of battling out at Worlds last year. It was the three of us making it to the final. And uh, you know, it's fantastic that you get to compete and I got to share the podium um, with, with my, my good mates in Strongman. And, and definitely even better that I was obviously I was the one in the middle of a Stoltman sandwich. And obviously off the back of the win at Britain's, uh, it's fantastic to go in as, as Britain's strongest man going into this European event and obviously really looking forward to it, just that the crowd at, at Leeds is always absolutely incredible. So yeah, you know, the events don't probably suit me as much as some others would, but it's still events I've been working hard on and I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Well, I, can, I, can, I believe I can win Europe's strongest man on home soil as well. I'll be definitely there trying to, trying to take the title, make it two from two, eh?